Within one hour of its capture, gliders flew over, bringing engineers to repair and improve the field. They floated down to make rough and dangerous landings under fire from the town. went to work as Chinese troops manned defense positions around the field. The monsoon started and driving rain made the task of the engineers doubly difficult. Stillwell arrived for a conference with Merrill. Now, with the elimination of enemy interception from Michinoc, cargo planes could fly to Kunming and in China on the southerly and more direct route at lower altitudes and with increased tonnage. However, before the air base could be operated effectively, the enemy had to be routed from the town. Michinal was pounded from the air by fighters and bombers. On the ground, American marauders and Chinese troops pounded the town with what little artillery they had. siege, 78 days, which finally ended in the complete destruction of the Jap forces defending the town. While the advance on Michinaw was taking place, the fourth Allied blow was struck, a thrust from the China-Burma border through the Salween River area by the Yunnan Chinese Expeditionary Force. The object of this blow was to clear the way for the eventual linking up of the Burma and Lido Road. To accomplish their task, two Jap strongholds, Lung Ling and Teng Chung, had to be taken. On the morning of May 11th, the offensive started. Five Chinese columns, together with a U.S. Army operations staff, crossed the Salween River. to the world's highest battleground, the Keoli Mountain, spur of the Himalayas. For days, they struggled up precipitous slopes until they sighted one of their goals, Teng Chung. The siege began. Soldiers driven from pillboxes streaked for cover, but machine guns picked them off as they ran.
back over the wrecked wall. There were no Jap wounded. Only dead. Except for a handful of prisoners. Teng Shung's bell. Then Lung Ling. And the Chinese and American flags flew over these two key strongholds. The B-29s that had come to China and India were striking at Burma, Sumatra, Java, Manchuria, flying the longest missions ever undertaken. Finally, they struck at the heart of the Japanese homeland and dropped their bombs on Tokyo. Japs struck back in the new China offensive. The American air bases that had been built in that country with such vast effort were in danger of being overrun by the enemy. There was barely time to destroy supplies and installations. base after another fell before the onslaught. Once again, roads and rails were packed with fleeing refugees. The offensive grew in strength until it had cut China in half. Now, unless supplies could be rushed through as never before, China faced total defeat. Tonnage over the hump was increased at a terrific rate. The pipeline that was already feeding the Allies in northern Burma pushed on so that it could feed the Allies in China. On the Lido and Burma Road, with enemy opposition being cleared away, the engineers raced at top speed to reach the point where the two roads would meet. On a historic day in January, Brigadier, later Major General Pick, commander of the Lido Road construction, met Lieutenant General Dan I. Sultan, who had succeeded General Stilwell as commanding officer of the India Burma Theater. General Sultan, the Lido Road's open. We have a convoy form. I'd like your permission to take it through to China. convoy was on its way from India to China across the 1,044 miles of the newly completed Lido Burma Road, now 
now called the Stillwell Road, in tribute to the man who had dedicated himself to the building of this great project. After a 24-day journey, the convoy arrived safely in Kunming. China's land bridge had been rebuilt. Aid had come to China. 